Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is uh, another video in the series of videos on the primary hemostasis now in the previous video i've told you about the platelet adhesion and i've told you that during the normal condition the concentration of the nitric oxide and the prostacyclines uh, which are vasodilators they relax the blood vessel and at the same time the nitric oxide and the prostacyclines they are inhibiting the platelet activation now during the uh, normal condition the subendothelial collagen uh, which is actually a part of this uh, muscular region as you can see over here this is the blood vessel this is the muscular part so the subendothelial collagen that is an important structural component of the smooth muscles that you see in the uh, uh, blood vessels so during the normal condition the subendothelial collagen this is in the non exposed form by that i mean that that is present on the interior of the blood vessel but when there is a damage to the blood vessels the uh, the subendothelial collagen that get exposed and when that exposed the platelets they bind directly to the exposed collagen through two major receptors one is known as the a to b1 and the uh, other one that is known as the uh, glycoprotein 6 at the same time, uh, there is another complex, GP1B59 receptor complex, that binds to the von Willebrand tractor. So both of these processes, the binding of the platelets through the integrin A to B1 and glycoprotein to the exposed collagen, and the GP1B59 complex, and, in this, and within this particular complex, the GP1B, it binds to the von Willebrand factor, therefore the platelet, they get adhered to the damaged blood vessel. Now, in this particular video, I want to focus on the platelet activation and the degranulation, which is actually the third step in the process of the uh, primary hemostasis. Now, say for example, if this is a blood vessel and this is in the injured form uh, because of some sharp thing, for example, there is an injury to the blood vessels. So what happens is that when there is injury to the blood vessel, the subendothelial collagen that is going to get exposed. As you can see over here, now this is, uh, you can see in the uh, exposed form. Now when that exposes, now the what the platelets do, they are going to utilize their glycoprotein 6 to bind to this uh, subendothelial exposed collagen now. At the same time, the platelets, they have got other receptors like the GP1B, as I've told you in the previous video, that is going to bind to the uh, von Willebrand factor. Now, when the uh, uh, platelets, they utilize the glycoprotein 6 and the glycoprotein 1B to bind to the injured blood vessel, this actually leads to the activation of the platelets. So what the activation of platelet means is that it is going for the uh, degranulation. What this means is that during the platelet activation, there are uh, granules like the uh, alpha granules and the dense granules. Uh, I have a detailed discussion on that in the uh, one of my video, which was focusing on the structure, function, production and the uh, composition of the platelets. And I'll share the links in the description. But what happens is the platelet, they have got granules and when the platelets, they get adhered to the injured blood vessels, they are going for the process of the degranulation and the process of the degranulation simply means that the component of the granules they are released and when they are released they are going to perform their important functions at the same time during the activation the platelet they are going to change shape and the changes in the shape of the platelets they are very important for their activation and the degranulation so when there is a uh, changes in the shape of the red blood cell uh, uh, not the red blood cells the uh, platelets uh, sorry for that when there are changes in the shape of the platelets uh, during the activation they are going to release the adp the fibrinogen the serotonin the calcium the thromboxane a2 these are just some of the components that you see in the uh, granules of the uh, platelets but during the uh, platelet activation and the degranulation all of the components of the granule they are released and then they are going to perform their uh, important function now if you talk about the uh, components of these granules uh, and their functions, in this particular video, I'm going to focus on these two specifically, the function of the ADP and the function of the fibrinogen. Now, the next step, when the platelets, they get activated and they, get, uh, they go for the degranulation, that is responsible for the platelet aggregation and the plaque formation. Now what happened during the uh, platelet aggregation is that when you talk about the platelets, they have got this important uh, receptor on their, on their surface. 
uh, this GP2B slash GP3 uh, uh, A complex. So initially, this particular complex, this GP1B and the 3 A complex, that is in the inactive form. Now, in this particular image, I'm showing you the uh, this particular complex in the uh, inactive form. You have to focus on the changes in the shape of this particular uh, of this particular receptor in the inactive and in the active form. So, in the inactive form, you can see this uh, this particular complex is in the banded form. So, this one is the inactive form. Now, for the aggregation of the platelets, the activation of this particular complex that is very necessary. So, how the activation of this particular complex is achieved? Now, when the ADP that is released during the activation and the degranulation of the platelets, the ADP is going for the activation of two important receptors. One is known as the P2Y1, which is actually a G protein coupled receptor, and the other one, which is known as the P2Y12, again, that is a G protein coupled receptor. So, I have detailed videos on the uh, G protein coupled receptor, what they do, and what are the different types of the G coupled receptor. But this is not the scope of this particular video. I'll share the uh, links in the description where I have a detailed discussion on these G protein coupled receptor. But for this particular video, just keep in mind that the P2 Y1 and the P2Y12, they are the G protein coupled receptor. So the ADP that is going for the uh, activation of these two receptors, the P2Y1 and the P2Y12. What these uh, P2Y1 and P2Y12 are going to do is they are going to activate this uh, GP2B slash 3A complex from their inactive form to their active form. So the ADP is indirectly responsible for the activation of uh, this particular uh, receptor complex from the inactive to the uh, active form. So now how this is achieved, uh, how the uh, aggregation of the platelets that is achieved then. Now if you can see over here, the shape of the uh, GP2B and 3A complex that is being changed and now this is in the open conformation. Now this is uh, one of the platelets and this one is another platelets. So because of the ADP, the uh, GP2A and 3A complex, they are going to get activated on all of the platelets. As you can see over here, this one is in the, in, uh, in the activated form and this one is in the activated form. Now. When the fibronogen that have been released uh, in response of the degranulation of the platelets, this fibronogen that is going to act as a bridge for the connection between the uh, active GP2B and 3A complex. So as you can see over here, if this is one platelet, this is another platelet, their uh, GP2B 3A complex that get activated because of the ADP. So the fibronogen that is going to act as a bridge between these two and hence the two platelets, uh, they are going to get aggregated. So this will be the phenomena that is followed for all of the platelets and all of the platelets they get in the aggregated form and when they aggregate that means they are going to make a platelet plug at the site of the uh, injury, at the site of the blood vessel injury. Now this is the like whole picture uh, that we discussed so far in the uh, different videos that uh, if this is the uh, damaged area the collagen that is going to get exposed, the more variable factor that will be uh, acting as a, uh, a receptor, uh, the, as a receptor for the uh, uh, for the receptor that are, uh, will, that will be acting as a ligand for the receptor that are present on these uh, uh, platelets. They are going to bind to the exposed drug collagen. There will be platelet adhesion. That there will be degranulation. The ADP that will be released and the ADP that is going to activate the GP2B3A complex. And when they uh, are when they are activated, as you can see over here, the different platelets they are going to adhere to each other, thereby making this platelet plug. And this platelet plug is going to stop the bleeding from this injured blood vessel. So this is all about the primary hemostasis. So if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and share it with your friends. And in the next video, I'll be talking about the secondary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis is actually carried out by the uh, clotting factors.